Hi, this is CF Liu from HowToFinanceMoney.com. After I posted dissecting IGB Read Part 1 and Part 2 in my blog, a lot of people actually posted a question. A question like, what are my chances to actually uh, get this IGB Read? Now, as you know, when you apply for IPO, uh, after it's oversubscribed, the who gets and who don't get, it's all done by uh, balloting. It's like undi, right? So, what are my chances? When and, and when I say the chances, uh, you and me are included because we are retail investor who's applying for the IPO. Uh, sorry to disappoint you, but the chances are really pretty slim. Yeah. Why I say so? Let's. Uh, I was reading this article or report by OSK Research on IGB Read. And I find it pretty interesting because this this rep um, report actually has uh, a lot of very useful info. Okay, just get page two. Okay, if you can see over here on this page, uh, post listing shareholders of IGB Read. Okay, if you ignore all the other figures and you just look at the um, units in issue after the IPO, what are the percentage of total share? Yeah, the second column over here. Retail and institutional investor will get 19.7, about 20% of the total shares in the market. And out of this 19.7%, the public, okay, the public, uh, the ones that apply. IPO through like Maybank to you and stuff. Only one percent of the public will actually get this IPO. So that's why I say the chances are pretty slim. Unless of course uh, you are the directors or employees and others uh, of uh, Chris Assets or, um, or IGB Corporation or a subsidiary or either you are institutional investor which doesn't really apply uh, to what we are talking over here. So the chances are slim. So what to do actually when you don't get the IPO even after you apply and then you realize that uh, on 20 September, oh, okay, your, your money got refunded and you don't get the IPO. Well, the question that most people will ask is that after it's listed on the um, Bursa, should I buy that at market price at probably more than one ringgit and 25 cent? Well, uh, that depends, but imagine if you are the landlord, okay, or you are a real big shot property investor uh, in in this market and IGB REIT is one of the, your baby, your properties, yeah, or you want to buy the properties in IGB read. What are the two things you look for if you're talking about property? First, of course, is the rent. And second is the valuation. Okay, it's pretty simple. So when you say rent, it refers to, okay, if you apply that to IGB read, it means that the rental collected from the two assets, namely Mid Valley Mega Mouse and the gardens. So I would like to just jump to page 12, right? Whoops. Okay, in page 12 onwards and a few pages I'm going to talk about here from this OSK uh, research is that if you talk about rent, imagine you are the property owner, what are the things that matter to you? Okay. First thing is being the occupancy rate because you might have a property, but if it's not occupied, it's not generating income for you anyway, right? So we look at um, the occupancy rates, okay? OSK Research actually put this in a very um, graphical way. I like that very much. Occupancy rate, what are the history, historical uh, rate, occupancy rate of this uh, IGB rate? If you can see here, uh, for Mid Valley Mega Mall, you have uh, occupancy rate of actually 99.8%, 
okay, hovers around 99, but never less than 99% since uh, 2009. And it's the same uh, for the garden. It's not, technically it's not exactly the same, but uh, it, it started in about 97% in 2009 and it retains about 99 over percent since uh, 2011 and 2012. So, and then in this slide, there's very interesting things over here is that if you look at the bar graph, okay, every year the uh, rental, the rental income, okay, per square feet, rents per square feet actually increasing, which is a very good trend. And it's surprising that the uh, rental per square feet is actually lower for the garden compared to Mid Valley. You know, the garden is more of a luxurious uh, mall, uh, catered for more branded stuff compared to Mid Valley, but yet it commands a lower rental. I would have to say probably it's the uh, the length of time because it's quite new compared to Mid Valley Mega Mall. But however, if you can see from this trend, it actually has a lot of room, okay, to grow in terms of rental. So imagine if you are the, the owner of this property and you see that, okay, I mean, this property at this area actually has huge potential in terms of the per square feet rent. So, and it is a good thing because uh, once um, the tenants actually renew their the rental, uh, ex whenever the expire expires, your market rate is either going up, so you can charge your tenants for a higher rental whenever they renew their tenancy lease. Which actually brings me to another point. Okay, whoops. Which is go to page thirteen. Bring me to another point is that um in page thirteen, yeah. Oh, even OSK research actually mentioned there's a potentially sizable rental rate hike, like um, what we have just discussed. But have you ever wondered what are the um, trade sectors or business inside uh, um, retail, retail mall, like IGB Read, in this case Mid Valley and the Gardens? What are the trade sector, the business that's more profitable? Well, if you think about retail mall, the first thing when you go to retail mall, there's a main tenant, right? A main tenant in malls like, you know, Jasco or Parkson or Carrefour and things like that. You would see that because they occupy the most space, okay, or net letterable area in the mall, if you naturally give a higher profit, okay, in terms of rent to the REIT property manager, it turns out this is not so, okay? But it, it's true that departmental store and supermarkets, normally the main tenants, okay, the main anchor tenant occupy the most, uh, the largest area inside a retail mall. Uh, as you can see from this pie chart over here, very nice pie chart, uh, Mid Valley Mega Mall, okay, and also, okay, we just skip this. And this the area, okay, it occupy the largest area here also for the garden mall. But however, if you were to consider in terms of uh, uh, trade mix uh, by percentage, okay, trade mix by percentage in terms of gross rental income, you'll be surprised that the most profitable business in a retail mall is actually not departmental store or the anchor tenant. Okay, it's fashion. Okay, oh, 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 it refers to all those uh, shops, uh, ladies' fashion. I would suppose because uh, most of the shops are uh, cater for ladies to go shopping okay no offense but it's just it's just the truth but you can see fashion apparels and food and beverages are the most profitable trade sector for a retail mall at any given time right okay and this is the same it's the same for the gardens yeah contribute more than um, 24 percent of its uh, rental income, but this is the rental income uh, is the exact thing that we are looking for in terms of the potential of this uh, mall. And then next, I want to go to 
uh, another point which is still related to rental income is this um, tenancy expiry. Okay, I did talk about this in uh, previous uh, videos. However, uh, again, OSK research, this report, it illustrates it so, so well. Yeah. So what about tenancy expiry? Because if you are the property manager or you're the owner of a property, uh, it makes no difference if you own a lot of property. But um, every time uh, when you want to renew your tenants um, rental, they actually don't uh, want to rent. Okay, so your property will be uh, unoccupied and that generates no income. So what's the point of that, right? Even you have a very great property. So um, when it apply that to uh, REITs, in this case, IGB REIT, uh, the expiry, okay, tenant lease expiry is about two to three years. Okay, that is what we have uh, mentioned. But the, uh, the data shows that um, the lease ex expiry, okay, I mean, like, because in this mall, we got too many tenants, so many tenants. And it seems like for, uh, for Mid Valley Mega Mall, in the year 2014, there will be the largest number of tenants, tenancy expiry, which is uh, due for renewal. And for the gardens, in uh, 2013, which is next year, the tenancy expiry will be about half, it means more than half of the tenants will be renewing their expiry. So what, when you say renewing the expiry, so it's a negotiation process. I mean, if the price um, negotiated is not acceptable for either party, then normally the tenant will just move out, right? That's just a normal thing to do, right? When you're renting a house or things like that. So uh, when it comes to rent, uh, I don't think the trend is going down, but it's always going up. But how many percent is acceptable for the tenants to actually make them stay or any perks and um, conditions that is provided for them to actually uh, not move out from a retail mall. So I'm not going to talk about the details on that. But however, if you see about more than half of um, the tenants in the gardens, uh, the tenancy expiry in, is next year. Should this be a concern for investor? Well, it should be a concern actually if um, you, the manager, the real manager cannot or not able to retain the tenant, which means that you have reduced rental income and then the our DPU will also drop. So what are the history? Yeah? What are the history for retention rates for Mid Valley Mega Mall and the gardens? For the past years, if you were to benchmark that. Okay, so this uh, this exact page shows the retention rate, okay, of the um, the tenants. Mid Valley Mega Mall, it's a, it has been in the uptrend and it hovers around ninety to ninety three percent. For the gardens, it's very low. Actually, it's quite low in 2009, but they, there has been a huge improvement in terms of retention rates for the tenants in 2010 and 2011, which is close to um, 90%. Yeah. So, uh, again, uh, I'm not too sure what the industry rates are for retention rates, but it looks good to me means that the REIT manager is doing everything it can to actually retain the tenants. And bear in mind that they only not, not only retain, it is actually a double-edged sword uh, by the REIT manager because you, when you renew a tenancy lease, of course, the increase in price would be upward. But you don't want to increase it too much until it force your tenant to move out because that will actually... Um, you have to literally lick back the speed that you have just spit it out, yeah? So if the retention rates are good, 
okay, as shown in this page. And still, there is a uh, 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 increase in the rental rate. Then I would say that all is good. Okay, the third thing and the last thing um, of this uh, report that we want to talk about is on the uh, hold on on the valuation yeah on the valuation of this IGB read uh, for property you have the value of your property but since we are talking about read here which is essentially a stock so there's a bit of um, fundamental analysis and also a value investing throw in into um, coming to this valuation so um, in part two of dissecting IGB read we have actually established the fact that the net asset value of this IGB read is actually 0.996 ringgit Malaysia that is the net asset value per unit and the IPO price is actually at 1.25 so even at the IPO price there is already a premium it's already trading at a premium uh, compared to its uh, valuation itself so um, if you don't get uh, the IPO at uh, 125 cent. So after listing uh, the price, let's say if it goes higher than 125 cent, should you still be uh, buying this stock? That is a very difficult question to answer. However, OSK Research actually has these recommendations and valuations to say. Okay, so to cut things short, OSK Research thinks that the valuation, the fair value of this IGB read is one ringgit and thirty-seven cent. Okay, FV future value, yeah, for those who are familiar. So it says that um, one hundred thirty-seven cent, which is um, it offers about ten percent upside compared to its IPO price and how they actually arrived with this price i'm not going too deep into that details but uh, suffice to say that uh, this is based on the two things uh, first being uh, taking into account the average um, dpu yield of um, all the retail malls in uh, malaysia re retail rates in malaysia about 5.1 percent of gross yield and also uh, some valuation in terms of the um, price per net asset value metric yeah so over here so if you can just quickly look at this table over here it got actually compares IGB read okay uh, which is a pure pay retail to other retail read in uh, Malaysia which has a uh, which is in a similar category and it says that value of IGB read is about 1.37 cent and this is um, compared to Sunway read, Capital Malls, Malaysia Trust and Pavilion read three of the very famous uh, retail reads here also and if you notice that the, the price of these um, three retail reads now has gone up so much okay I've gone up so much compared to its net asset value there is there is a, 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 a premium of more than um, about what, 40 percent of its current price compared to this um, net asset value of this uh, Sunway capital malls and pavilion so if you think deeper on this so why why uh, in this economy actually um, investor are actually buying in into retail rates is because uh, many believe that these retail rates uh, they provide um, consistent dividend or DPU and it also very very defensive. So uh, I'm not surprised to say that. To see that it, the price has gone up um, so much compared to its valuation 
for the past six months or for the past nine months. So there you there you have it. Um, some of the salient points to note um, for IGB read uh, before it goes listing uh, after in the mid of uh, this month. So um, keep your finger crossed. If you don't get it, um, you don't get the IPO uh, after you apply for it. The IPO is uh, uh, date already closed now by now. But if you don't get it, I hope these uh, few points will actually assist in your decision to actually uh, invest or to not invest in this IGB read after it goes listing. Okay, signing off. This is uh, CF Liu from howtofinancemoney.com. Take care. I'll talk to you soon.